Uh, once again, this song, we got my main man Steve Kim on the line. You know, the most hated, you know, the you know, most hated, but never duplicated. Let's get this man, this young man, a round of applause. <laughs> Steve, what's going on, man? Coach, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you real good now. No, I just want to say hello to your audience. Another great Southern California day, sunny, low 80s, wearing shorts and sandals, heading over to the office in East L.A. Ah, the birds are chirping. The <laughs> grass is green. You know, the sky is blue. The clouds are billowy. What a great day. What a great day in America. How's everyone, how's everyone going out there? How are you doing, Coach? Oh, man, everything going good, man. Everybody, you know, I, I reached out to a couple of people, man. Uh, everything is going good. I spoke to Kid Austin and his dad. You know, everything is going great with them. Um, you know, just re I reached out to a lot of people, checking on them, making sure everybody all right. I have to do a lot more of that because I really don't do that. Like, I, I, I need to do more of that. Just check on people at least once a week, make sure everybody's okay, you know, everybody that I'm affiliated with. But I'm, I'm good, Steve. I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, there's not too much going on. You know, the uh, this weekend, the, the fights are kind of eh. Um, there's probably the most nondescript, anonymous title unification bout that I can remember on ESPN. And then uh, also on Showtime, as they show Tim Zhu, Coach, this could be the last Showtime boxing broadcast ever. Not on pay-per-view? No, what, you mean, on, are you, hold on, hold on, I'm hearing, hold on, wait, 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 repeat that. you saying this may be the last one? This may be the last. Non pay per view broadcast. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because yeah. look, you know what they're going to be doing in the next couple of months. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, taking everyone's money that wants to partake. But uh, if you look at the uh, actual schedule, like that show with Subriel Matthias, I believe, is now being shifted onto the David Benavidez undercard. That's good. So it should, it should. So it should do that, yeah. right. So I don't know if. Showtime Championship Boxing will even have a regular broadcast after this weekend. Yeah, so um, from what I've heard, from what I've heard, you know, they're just going to be doing pay per view. So if a fighter wants, to, if a promotional company wants to use their platform to put on a pay per view, they don't have an issue with that. Um, because they're not they're not fronting the money. They're not going to put right. the guarantee up. So basically, the promotional company, in this case, probably PBC, we want to put this fight on your pay per view, but they have to. But Showtime is not financially responsible for anything am i correct right basically when it comes to pay-per-view you know the promoter could put up a guarantee yeah. uh, and say to each fighter hey look we'll guarantee you xyz and you can have a piece of the percentage of the upside should it hit certain benchmarks but in reality it is different than when a network puts it as part of a let's say a boxing budget and they give a uh, a licensing fee so that's a little bit different and look say what you want about pay-per-view but when you do a pay-per-view, that is the truest, one of the truest forms of promoting mm -hmm. because the safety net, there really is none. You've got to go out there and put on a product that the, the people are going to respond to. See, that's the, that's the thing. Now, what happens, Steve, when you take a product and you put it out there and you say, hey, this is the price tag that we want on this product, but the people didn't ask for the product? Then how, how, well, how does that work? you're probably going to take a loss. You're probably going to need a red pen. Um, the, the, the interesting thing is to me, as much as we hate pay-per-view and as much as I've struck out against pay-per-views that really that at least 20 years ago would be on regular premium cable, HBO or Showtime mm -hmm. is that it is the truest form of promoting because a lot of times when the network would give an arbitrary figure, like they pay a fighter or a license fee for a particular fight. They'd go like $5 million. And then you'd see that fight in a small ballroom in front of a thousand people with not much of a television audience. I, I would always leave myself or I, I would always leave that event thinking, was that really worth five million? If you can't get a half million people to watch it on TV, you can't even sell 1500 tickets. Is that fight really worth a half million? Now, at least with pay per view, you get a true gauge of what a fighter and a fight is worth. Mm -hmm. Because if they do a hundred thousand buys at eighty dollars, and you then you know, obviously got to go with the fifty-fifty split, approximately with the cable and satellite network, you can honestly derive a certain market value and say that fight was right, worth right around, you know, forty million or whatever, whatever the math is, right? And at that point, that's where you can start to 
carve out a market value for each fight. And if you're trying to put together other bigger fights, you could start using that information and data to see, all right, how can we be fair to both fighters, but also at the same time, make a little bit of money for ourselves? Because that's important. People can pay what they want about promoters. If all the promoters lost money on every single event and they went out of business, guess what, guys? You'd have a lot of fighters that would be looking for a place to fight. So, so um, you hear fighters like, and, and okay, I, I'm, let me pivot a little bit. Do you do you do you feel uh, that um, the Haney, the Haney uh, Regis Pro Grade fight is, is? Do you feel that's a pay per view fight, Steve? Uh, I'll just put it to you like this: in 2018, the Zone promised us fights of that nature would not be pay per view. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who announced that pay-per-view is dead, right? I didn't say it. You didn't say it. Your audience didn't say it. Um, and that's the type of fight that I would say 15, 20 years ago would have been on regular HBO, either championship boxing or Showtime championship boxing as part of our subscription. Now, Coach, I've been a subscriber to The Zone since day one. And what I'm finding is that my subscription fees are getting higher and higher, yep. and I'm getting less and less value from that money. I'm not happy. You know? So would I, would I say that, look, if it's Canelo, David, Benavidez, I say that's pay-per-view. They would not get an argument from me. But when you are saying, well, that fight's on pay-per-view because both fighters want to get paid a lot. That's um, different. Yeah, yeah. Why is that my problem, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Wow. no why is that my problem? I mean, we need to get back to some economic sanity here, but good luck to those promoters because they're the ones putting up that exorbitant amount of money um, to bring both sides to the table, and there is some risk to them. But again, as a subscriber to The Zone, something about that thing, it does bother me because you were the ones who said, pay-per-view is dead. I never said it, right? Right, <laughs> so, right. Uh, and I've, through every single price hike of the zone, I've dutifully signed up and I've said, okay, I need this. It's part of my job. I got to watch the fight. You know what's funny? As someone who does not watch that misfit stuff and the influencer boxing, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not watching it. I'm not getting paid. That, yeah, thank you. <laughs> My time is worth something more than what you think. It, 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 there's something about that that bothers me. And I, I've generally gotten along with the zone people. But if they ever wanted to talk to me about it, I'd lay it out. I'd say, look, you're the one who over-promised and under-delivered. Right. This is not a me problem. This is a you problem. Because I know this, though, Coach, a lot of people agree with you and me. Right, 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 right. Hey, hey, Steve, influencer boxing. I had a guy call here yesterday. I, I can't make this up, Steve. Um, and, and shout out to my main man, Garmo from L.A., man. Uh, he's an Asian kid, man. Uh, you know, I think you might know who he is because he, when I was in L.A., he was trying to link up with, link up with me when I was there, but I just didn't have the time. And um, he was like, uh, yeah, I've been trying to catch up with Steve Kim. Anyways, he said that um, he don't want to see Canelo doing any more ducking and cherry picking. He want to see Canelo fight um, David, ben David Benavidez. These are the three fights he wanted. I can't make this shit up. He want to see uh, Canelo fight David Benavidez. If not, fight Terrence Crawford. If not, fight Jake Paul. <laughs> Jake Paul, what? <laughs> okay. He, yeah, he... <laughs> hey, he was dead serious. And before he ended the call, he said, oh, yeah, man, Jake Paul. Yeah, see, yeah, man. And I'm like, bro, how? Like, these are two different worlds. You taking an influencer boxer, a social media boxer, and you saying you want a the cash cow to sport of boxing, you know, um, to fight an influencer? Come on, man. You can't make this shit up. And, you know, in the words of Meatloaf, two out of three ain't bad. Um... I just, I, look, the, the whole Jake Paul thing, I'm not against it, but I have not paid attention to that in at least two years. <laughs> it, it was a novelty. <laughs> I peeked my head into the tent. I'm good. Uh, I believe in capitalism, but capitalism also gives me the right as a consumer to say, no, I'm good. Um, uh, I'll be watching boxing tomorrow because that is still my job or still a couple of my gigs. But I'm not going to lie, my main focus will be on college football. 
But, you know, and but I simply do not have time to watch KSI against whatever Paul <laughs> brother that is. It's just, hey, but it's, hey, I, I mean, coach. Rick, they got doggone job. This I saw. I saw one of them like a like a let the way in right. They got a glass right there. John Fury is so predictable. He's put, taking his shirt off, you know, punching the glass, ah, doing all of this. I'm like, dude, it's we know it's a, we know it's an act. Like I don't, but but you know what? In that world. I, I think that works over there in that world. But like you say, the social media boxing, I, I, I haven't caught on to it yet. I have some people in the chat that really, really like Jake Paul. I, I just haven't caught on to it yet, bro. Like, you know. I, yes, I, I, and, I and that do. is certainly their right to like it, to support it, and to watch it. And it is certainly my right to ignore it. Um, I don't, you know, I don't get into big arguments over the impact of it. I don't think it's all that much of an impact, to be honest with you. I think it's great for the pocketbook or the bottom line of Jake Paul, yeah. um, I, I don't know if I've really seen this incredible influence or impact on regular boxing. Boxing still has the same issues. I, You know, it's not like Jake Paul's financing great fights. He's, he's financing his own events, which, which is absolutely his right. Which is right, yeah. But, but, you know, going back to the original premise of is Devin Haney pro-gray uh, a pay-per-view fight. Well, in reality, it is. The question is, how well will it do? My guess is it'll probably do 100,000 pay-per-view buys or less. So if you want to use that as a traditional gauge of how many people are actually willing mm. to fork out another 70 to $80, I would say no. But the reality is, though, Coach, yes, it is a pay-per-view event, unfortunately, or for better or worse. Okay, so... so <laughs> Wow. Okay. So that leads me to something else. So I think it's going. I think it's going to do. You know. You you know when the record business ain't when the, when the album does well. They say we went platinum, a double platinum, a triple platinum, or we went gold. I think this pay per view is going to go quadruple aluminum, and um, because <laughs> be, because Re, and I like Regis Program. Nice guy, but he doesn't really have a fan base. No, he doesn't. And Devin I mean, has, he had he had. Coach, he had problems selling tickets in New Orleans, uh, and I really like Regis, but he's been so inactive, mm. uh, never really had a fan base built for him. Yeah. And Devin Haney, his pay-per-view fight, even with like a Lomachenko, didn't do overwhelmingly well, and that's with the full ESPN marketing push and a marketing plan. I Look, again, if you would have put that on regular The Zone, and you would have said, hey, also, you're getting fam." Rodriguez against Sonny Edwards, I'd be like, you know what? Everyone needs to get the zone. We need to support that product. Yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, look, you know. No, go ahead, Steve. Sorry about that. Right. And so I think the zone is now, what, $20, $25 a month? That's one of the highest apps you could pay for. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I don't watch a lot of stuff on the zone except for when they have a fight. I just renewed my subscription. I had, um, I had canceled it. You know, I'm like, man, cause I don't, I don't even watch it. To be fair, I, I, I watch darts every now and then. I got into darts, <laughs> but the purpose really? of me, the purpose, yeah, yeah, darts, yeah, I, you know, darts is pretty good. But uh, the purpose of me buying it was for the boxing, and I found myself watching less and less, you know, of it. You know, um, if it's if it's a if it's a, um, a fight that comes up comes a part of my um, subscription, yes, I watch it. But if it's on pay per view, I'm like, ah, I really don't know about this one. But um, I had just canceled it not too long ago. Probably about last month I canceled it, and then um, no, two months ago I canceled it, and then I think I I picked, I, you know, I renewed it again um, because you know I'm, I'm paying I'm paying like twenty some dollars a month or two hundred over two hundred dollars a year for it, but I'm hardly watching it. I really don't. You know, I'm hardly watching it, so I'm like, damn, I ain't no need me just let me just keep taking money out. And I ain't really watching the shit, so let me go ahead and um um. Let, let me, let, let me, yeah, let me. I mean, Coach, go ahead, times see. when I'll go to the zone, like um, the uh, Zerto Ramirez-Joe Smith fight. I had to watch that, yeah. right, after. Uh, me too. Watch that on Saturday night. And I, and I was just kind of looking around the website. I was like, wow, I hadn't been here for like a full month. I literally had not punched up the zone for about a full month or so. Because mm. basically, unless they have a live fight that I care about, um. You're right. It's not like an ESPN Plus that has the 30 for 30 library. They have some of their daily shows. Um, they have other things, right? They put on the top rank undercards, and those are pretty good with the prospects. 
But I literally can go months without ever punching up the zone. If you really look at their activity the last year and a half, two years, mm -hmm. there's less and less of those major cards that were once headlined by guys like Gennady Golovkin, Canelo Alvarez, Anthony Joshua. Um, just look at, look at the calendar from your past year or so. It's telling. Yeah, you know, um, it, it seems like Anthony Joshua... Uh, I, maybe he's still popular and big in the UK. I don't know, but it just seemed like it seemed like he fell off big time. You know, um, um, and it, I could be wrong. I could be I could be one hundred percent wrong, but it appears that uh, it, just seeing him in certain interviews, and, you know, the way he talks, and uh, he's not really sure of himself, and this and that, and um, it, it just seemed like the the Zone app, you know, and then with Showtime. They're done, you know. They're, you know, they're not really. They're not. They don't. They're not going to have a boxing program where they're just putting on free boxing anymore. Everything's going to have to be pay per view, you know. Um, it, it it brings me to Tank Davis and and, um, and um, Esau Cruz. Now we knew that Tank was going to fight Esau Cruz. Now you know, like if I if I was bet ninety nine percent of my wealth, whatever that may be, I bet that you know what he probably going to be fighting Esau Cruz because after Tank fought Roly Romero at the Barclay Center. The first name that uh, that um, that um, Kenny, what's the name? Of, what, what's what's the name? Not Coach Kenny, but um, uh, Tank Davis is trained. Calvin Ford said was Calvin Ford. Yeah, he yeah. said he said, yeah, man, we want to fight. You know, Ellie sat back, asked him, who you want to fight next? He said, you know, if, if it was up to me, we want to. I want to. I want to see Young and fight. Talking about Tank fight uh, t uh, Esau Cruz because we made him a star. So he want to fight because we made him <laughs> a star. That's what he said. Um, I don't know where Esau Cruz is a star at. He ain't even a star in Mexico. So. Uh, but hey, I don't know. You know, they, they say he's a star, so be it. Um, but then now, now we're hearing that okay, you know, Michael Benson said on Twitter that hey, that that fight is going to be next year, part of the, uh, the first quarter of the year. That's going to be on pay per view. Now, I want to see what tanks. We, I knew we knew got an idea what he was selling prior to Ryan Garcia. Now, you know, when he fights uh, um, uh, Esau Cruz. If I'm a betting man, Steve, they'll be lucky if they get two hundred thousand buys on that fight. Yeah, but but Leonard Ellaby will claim it did a half million on Twitter, so don't oh, forget of course, that. Oh, of um, course, yeah, of course, of course. You know that, but that, that's, what so, he's, that's what he's supposed to say, though. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, it's just like that's why another. I don't, know, I don't know if it's a perfect analogy, but I mean, how many more Transformer movies do we need? Certainly, all the fight for Tank, I never want to see Pitbull again. Man, Pitbull, man, let me that tell you something, man. Fighter. Man, yeah. Pitbull, Pit Pitbull is a one trick pony. We do, do, we saw his last fight. He struggled tremendously in that fight. Um, loads up on his, he throws bolo punches from different angles, overhand rights, bolo punch, um, wide hooks. I don't think this guy know what a jab is. You know, he's flat footed, but he does cut the ring off. He's slow when he's he's slow when he's um when he's trying to slide from side to side. He is slow, but he does slide in the angle, and you can see his punches coming a mile away. You know, um, he has now he has one of the he has a neck on him. Like if you can, he, he can take a punch. I can give him that, but um, bro, that's not a pay per view fight, man. Like come on, man. Like well, I'm not buying that shit. I'm not, I, I didn't buy the last no. one. I didn't buy this one. Well, let's just put it this way: if your core Stevenson would have fought Pitbull. I don't think anyone would have made a big deal out of it. That's the point that is expected to win. And we wouldn't necessarily think of it as a step forward or a monumental one. We're, we're in an era, Coach, and we talk about this a lot. Nowadays, your guys at the Tank Davis level fight once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. The last thing we need to do is see a bunch of repeats of fights that weren't necessarily classic to begin with. You know? Um, Am I disappointed that they're going back to Pitbull? Um, yeah, I'm disappointed, but am I surprised? Of course I'm not. I don't expect anything less. Yeah, so so um, so um, uh, for me, I mean, for me, like, again, the consumer, we, you know, we pick and choose what we want, what we want to buy. I'm not complaining about anything. The networks, the fighters, they can do whatever they want to do. I don't have a problem with it myself. But guess what? You don't dictate what I'm going to pay for. If I choose not to pay for something, I'm not going to pay for something. Because the, the consumer is the one, Steve, that determines what the value is. If it's something that you see that's valuable to you, 
uh, um, you know, that you want to see from an entertainment standpoint, and you're willing to sacrifice your time to see something, then you're going to be willing to pay for it because you deem it's, it's valuable. Just for me, those fights, uh, that fight is not valuable. Now I am, and I am going to buy the Regis Program and Devin Haney fight. I'm going to buy that fight because I'm going to go live for it, do a fight party. I am buying that fight. Um, I really don't want to buy it, but I, I'm, I'm, a, but I'm, but I'm, a, but I'm, but I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it. I, I'm gonna buy it. Just, yeah, just I mean, go live for it. Coach, I've said this to other people on other shows. Boxing fans often have the belief, or they're guilted into it by other people with some agendas, that we have to support everything. You have to watch everything. And if you're not, you're not a real fan, or even though or worse, you're a racist, you hate mm -hmm. the fighters, this or that, mm -hmm. right? Here's the thing that gets me. Um, why aren't people that like movies forced to go to every single movie? I don't go to every movie. I just go to the ones that I want. <laughs> and, you know, when you go to a movie theater and they show you a half hour worth of previews, when I see a preview, I'd be like, you know what? That's a pretty good one. Other ones, I'm like, nah, nah, eh. Oh, that one's okay. I don't understand why boxing fans, when it comes to pay-per-view, are not allowed to have that same discretion. Well, the thing, I, I don't get it. The thing that this is this is the thing on social media. You have um, you have fans who again, you have these guys. They participate, and I say victim Olympics. But a lot of these guys, some of these guys, they participate. They do skin color politics. So you may have people who may say, "Hey, I'm gonna buy a certain fight." because this guy's white, or I'm gonna buy a certain fight because this guy's black, or whatever. Now, that's not always, I'm gonna tell you why that's bullshit, because, you know, we're, we're not a monolith group, right? Like, you're, you know, if a person wants to buy a fight, you know, if you if you wanna buy it based on anything other than uh, non-boxing related, that's your choice. When I buy a fight, I pay for the fight because I see some value in it. And I said, you know what? This is going to be a competitive fight. These guys are going to uh, are going to are going to fight for my money, you know. Because if, you know, if you're doing pay per view, you're depending on me to pay. You know, you're going to make money off of whatever, however many pay per views you sell. So you're depending on me to buy the pay per view. I determine whether I want to buy it or not. Whether you know, de de um, depending upon whether I see value in it. So, 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 whatever reason, what a person want to buy a fight for or don't buy it, so be it. What, what you're not going to do is try to shame me into not buying the fight. Right. Whatever your agenda is, if you want to buy a fight because he, the, uh, the dude look like you, buy the fight because he look like you. But don't, but don't motherfucking tell me that I have to do the same thing and if I don't do it, you ain't no boxing fan. Who, like, who the fuck is you? I don't give a fuck what you think about me. Like, who, you know, you get what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's the standard. And as you said, if these people have a double standard, they have no standard at all. Yeah. But again, the same people that are crying for showtime uh, were the same people celebrating that HBO went out of the boxing business. <laughs> uh, I, and that, that's the irony of it. Uh, but to understand hypocrisy or your own hypocrisy, you got to have a level of intelligence, which, quite frankly, is a little bit lacking in certain people. Let's be honest. But, um, look, the, everyone knows what's going on in the world. The economy's tough. People don't always have discretionary income. People have budgets. There are probably yeah. more important things yeah. to spend money on. And then boxing. And shame on boxing for not being able to create a more sound business model mm. for the consumer so that they don't have to overpay just to make the fight that we should be making. You know, um, I, look, I understand that there is a need for pay-per-view. It is a necessary evil. I've written it. I've talked about it. But when it starts to get Exploited to a point where it has almost, I don't want to say like a hostage situation with the fans, <laughs> but you are almost coercing them to always get it against their will. There's something about it that goes beyond supply and demand. Hey, hey you know, you hit the nail right on the head. Supply and demand. If there is a demand for it, you supply it. The problem is. You're, you're supplying something and that, 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 that there's no demand for. You have, you, right. have, you got Pope Chop Willie on the left fighting Godzilla. Now, we don't want to see Godzilla fight Pope Chop Willie. We want to see Godzilla fight Mothra. We want to see Godzilla fight uh, Gamera. We want to see Godzilla fight Ultraman or something of that sort. You're telling me because it's Godzilla. 
what you gonna do? You gonna buy it because this guy's don't worry about who the, who, who the other dude is. You know, we just we you know we just we, you know he fighting this chapstick I got in my hand. You know, you, you gonna put, we gonna put it on a pay per view? No, it doesn't work that way. And you're not going to tell the boxing fans, yo man, you know, if you don't support a fight for the reasons that I'm supporting a fight for, then you know, cause you got a lot of these dudes, they laptop revolutionaries. So they want to be the uh, the YouTube Huey P. Newtons, YouTube uh, um, Malcolm X's, YouTube Marcus Garvey's. All that shit sound good, but it has nothing to do with my money. When you're trying to separate me from my money, you know what I mean? That That's a whole nother ball game. I pay for what I find value in. If you pay for it, you thought it was valuable. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to tell As you what you to do should. with your money. Yeah. I mean, look at the UFC. They put on a pay-per-view every month. But there's a little bit of a difference there. Uh, number one, they actually stack their cards. I I'm not the biggest UFC fan, um, but top to bottom, I think their cards are deeper with better matchups across the board. Mm. Um, but I don't ever see these discussions on if you don't buy UFC 281, uh, you're not a fan. But, but maybe that person just says, you know what? That card doesn't appeal to me like UFC 280 did or 279. There, there's actually a much more honest discussion in terms of pay-per-view mm -hmm. with the UFC, which goes monthly, um, because their fans aren't into this whole political racial dynamic of if you support this or that or no, don't, you're either racist or you're prejudiced. And, you know, I, I think that for so long, a lot of those people were placated. Um, people didn't want to be branded racist or prejudiced. And it, it was like the most dishonest discussion there was. Now, finally, there is that proper pushback that these people, I think, have been unearthed as really being dishonest. Mm -hmm. Dishonest and dumb, which is really a bad combination. But I just, it, it's amazing, though, that if you believe that all boxing fans need, need to buy every single pay-per-view to support the sport and the fighters, my question is this. Does that go for every single pay-per-view, regardless of promoter? Because these guys, they have different standards. They'll be the, the same ones that'll tell you we're not buying, we're not supporting Bob Aaron and Top Rank when it's uh, whoever it's Devin Haney, Lomachenko. Will be the same ones that'll tell you to buy another fight from another promoter, regardless of the matchup. That's where again, it, it's very, very dishonest what these people do. And you know what it is, Steve? That, that it, what it is is, you know, these guys are fans of networks that, and promotional companies. Yeah. These are not boxing yeah. fans. They, they, you know, they are fans of networks and promotional companies, and they do skin color politics because it fits their in agenda. A lot of these guys, they like to project onto you their own insecurities, whatever they're going through in life, whether it's racial insecurities, relationships, or whatever, and they like to project that. So... I sit back, me being a marketer myself, I sit back and I studied a lot of these guys and I'm like, oh, I see what's going on here. You know, there's, there's a whole lot of things going on with a lot of these um, online fans that have nothing to do with boxing. It, you know, it's politics, you know, you with certain political parties, it's, uh, it's, it's racial, it's uh, what city you, it's everything to do, do what the fuck that got to do with a check left hook and um, the matchup of this fight. It ain't got nothing to do with the matchup of the fight. You know, and you know, so when you, when you if, if you sit back and just observe and listen to these guys long enough, you'll see y'all, it's, it's the same old bullshit. Same old bullshit. It's the same yeah, shit you see going on very, in politics right now. It's the same shit. It's very, very dishonest what they do. Um, and I just decided long ago, like, look, <laughs> we're not gonna see eye to eye. Uh, I think too many people have been dishonest in, during this discussion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, boxing is the only sport where the dumbest fans think that they should be listened to more than anybody. Um, <laughs> I know. It's really, it's actually amazing how, like, now now the word against Inoue is, can he really be the, the best fighter in the world or fighter of the year if he fights on a Tuesday? Um and I'm thinking to myself, what's that have to do with the price of, of, of uh, Hello Kitty in Japan? Yeah. Um, I mean, these were the same people that said he had never faced a slick black fighter and that uh, Fulton was going to outbox him, this, this, and that. Yeah. Well, their pipe dreams got ruined and shattered, and now it becomes an agenda. Yeah. But these are the same people that will tell you, well, we just want to keep it boxing. That's why we have these agendas. The last thing they actually really want to discuss is boxing. Yeah, they use they use 
boxing as some sort of subject matter for what they believe is some sort of pseudo revolutionary social political agenda. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself that 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 is a height of like the fakest, phoniest, ineffective online activism. Online activism is, is, is in itself very weak and phony. Because what are you really doing? You're hashtagging and you're airing out your grievances. You're just complaining. You're like, you're literally doing nothing in the community. No, I'm being serious about it. That's why it's hard to take these people seriously. You know, you know I mean, complaining all day on Twitter, you're not exactly like Malcolm X here. You're, you're not, you know, you're not Stokely Carmichael. I hate to tell you that, buddy. Okay. Um, but there's, a, there's some harsh truth. And then like, when you say it, they get angry because no one's ever been truly honest with them. Because unfortunately, a lot of people have kind of been afraid of the blowback. And I, I just decided I don't give a man, shit about the blowback. Man, I'm going to be honest. Blow, shit, fuck the blowback. I'm, 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 listen, I'm standing 10 toes down. Like, oh, listen, these yeah. are the same guys who are calling the show. Yeah, n- nigga, you're cool. You're a sellout. You, I got shooters. You better not come to the fight. I'm, si- I'm, si- I'm sitting there like, okay, so all right. I'm a cool, I'm all the time, I'm a sellout. I get, I get that right from the black boxing fans. And then from the Mexican boxing fans, not all of them, but some, and not all of the black black boxing fans, but some, um, the ones with the agendas, then they say I'm, I'm racist against Mexicans. You don't like Mexicans, you know. You, all you care about, all you care about, is the black fighters. And then I get some white boxing fans because I don't like Tyson Fury. I like him as a fighter. I always say this: I like him as a fighter, but I don't like his antics outside of the ring. I don't. I'm not calling him a cheater or none of that stuff there, even though he got a couple drugs. But I ain't tripping on none of that. But then they'll say the same thing. So I've come to the conclusion. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say what I want to say, which I've, I've, I've always been like that anyways. When I want to say it, if you don't like the content, don't watch the show. Right. Like, how are you, that, you going to hate what I'm doing, but you're going to watch me every day? So you're going to hate, watch, be mad. God, I can't stand him. You're cool. Like, these dudes are grown men, and they throw temper tantrums. I ain't got time to be codifying beta males. I don't give a fuck about them. I don't. Um, go ahead, Steve. I no, that, that's the point. Yeah, I, I just I just find the whole thing tiresome. And for years, um, the, I, I, for some reason, they always wanted to be taken seriously. Like, you give them facts, and then all of a sudden, you know, they, they, they didn't like the fact that you had information. And then what I always found the most maddening is, like, how you wanted to give them facts. You give them the facts, and, and then they try to say that you're lying. And I've always said... Your level of ignorance is not my level of intelligence. I know that sounds arrogant, but I'm just telling you that's the way I feel. And so a lot of these guys, I'm not going to lie to you, I actually enjoy trolling these guys more than I do the actual fights now. I just get more enjoyment out of it. I just, I don't know why it doesn't speak well of me, but I mean, I'm at that age, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I I, I can't lie to you. That week uh, in late July when Fulton and uh, Errol Spence got beat, it was so funny that all of a sudden, those same guys who were on those agendas we talk about, uh, all of a sudden they they were the ones whining and crying. This is a, all these memes they're making. This is just about boxing to them. I'm like, you know what's funny? You guys did this to yourselves with the level of discourse, which was very low. Your level of dishonesty and your flat out stupidity, and then you don't know anything about boxing. And so, like, once Fulton got knocked out, I said, oh, I know where this is going. That, that was Hiroshima. Saturday's going to become Nagasaki. You could just feel it. Hey you, know hey, you know what, man? If I could just go back to that week and just live. Oh. They know If God gave me the powers to say, you know what, God? I just want to hit the rewind button and just go back to the week of July from, from July 24th, I think I'll, I'll just go back to the 23rd. The, I think that fight happened on the 24th, right? July 24th <laughs> to the 25th. What well, I just say even the 26th because the next day the blowback. If you could just allow me to go back in time, which I can on YouTube, and just just relive that moment all over again, it was the funniest. Like I never seen so many grown laptop revolutionaries 
crying before my life. They was crying. They was bitching. They was moaning. They was lying. They was deleting YouTube channels. They was calling people coons, Uncle Tom's, sellouts. They was in hiding. Now they trying to raise their head a little bit more again. And it's like, man, God damn. True, you know true, what? True. Coach, you know what's interesting about in a way he is now the next like guy that they're targeting. Yeah. And I could tell that in a way must really be a premier elite fighter just by what they expect out of him. And I've said this in life: the standards and expectations that you have on somebody or for something is what you truly think about them. Yeah. So I'll just write, I'll, I'll just write anything about Inouye. Like last week I talked about how his fight with Topolis was going to happen in late December. I was able to talk to, uh, who was it? I was able to talk to uh, Bob Aram and he kind of gave me a little bit of a, not a scoop, but he just mentioned, hey, it's going to be sometime in late December. So here's what I thought was funny. As you take a look at some of the reaction, and I don't really go back and forth with people uh, on Twitter that much, unless it's a positive thing, because I'd rather just keep it positive. But it is funny. People said, yeah, man, in a way, he'd be needing to fight Tank, yo. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so this guy just got to 122. But your expectation, and again, you're actually giving in a way the highest compliment. You're saying he needs to move up three, four weight classes. While with Tank, you don't even want him to fight certain lightweight as a lightweight. Think about that. Again, the standards and expectations you place on somebody, that's what you really think about him. Yeah, I mean it is what it, it, it is what it is. Um, like like this brother in the chat, he said, uh, he, I think he what he said, he said Rick is a good an, an, an analyst, but but he's a uh, this ain't got nothing to do with you. He said he's a suspected white supremacist. Now, um, I get that, I, I I do get that because this come from the same group of people. Um, these guys come from the Umar Johnson crew. They come from the um, Tariq Nasheed crew. They come from the um, a lot of the groups that I used to follow back in the day. You know, like um, I used to be a part of a lot of these groups myself. So I do get it. You know, um, white supremacist. Now, um, I want the brother to call here. You know, FBA, I want you to call the show. And I want you to explain to me how Rick is a white supremacist. Like, give me some examples. I have not had anyone send me any receipts, send me anything of that sort. Um, a lot of the stuff that you guys call racist, you feel that if someone is not your color, your skin complexion, and they not bowing down to you, or if they standing up for themselves, you know, um, not, not allowing you to um, put labels on them, then you say that they racist. So I say, give me an example. And then you guys can't give me no examples. So the phone lines will be open later on today. Um, it's 530-494-9636. Um, and just call and give me one example. Um, as a matter of fact, Rick could be on the show after Steve, so you can call and say, and just take your claim. Yeah, man, you're a racist. This, you did this, you did that. You said this, yada, 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 blah, this, quasi. Like, please do. I'm pretty, But I'm pretty sure you won't call the show. I know you won't call the show. I know you won't. Right. I, I mean, just complaining and being a perennial malcontent online, um, that, that to me is the, the lowest, most ineffective form of causing change and just, is just constantly pointing fingers over people that don't have the same world viewpoint as you. Yeah. And this is part of the problem I have with the world today. Look, politically and socially, I think a lot of people probably disagree with me. And that's absolutely fine. That is part of the First Amendment, I think, that I cherish as a true American. But here's the thing. I, I, w I don't even get upset for people having distant, uh, a, a differing viewpoint from me. Because what I will never do is force my viewpoint to be your viewpoint. Too many people... Um, coach, including some of your audience that hate watch or whatever you want to call it, they almost want to leverage you to agree with them instead of just saying, you know what, me and Malachi, I don't agree with anything he says, but I enjoy his show. They can't live with the fact, and, and this really is a form of narcissism, is that it's not okay to have different viewpoints. They actually feel they have the right that if you do not agree with them, then you are racist, prejudiced, or the bigot. Who gives a and fuck? that's I, I, that. Yeah, and it <laughs> truly is a low form of uh, of low form of intelligence. I mean, I don't give a listen. I don't give a fuck what a, I don't give a fuck what a motherfuckers think about me. I don't give a damn. Like, if you feel that way about me, why the fuck you over here watching me? 
I really don't give a damn, Steve. I don't care. Like, ain't none of these motherfuckers been what I've been through. Now, I was in the, I was in the nation for 25 years. I did security in, in different Cabrina Green, Cabrina Green projects in Chicago and all over the country, different places. Got trained by some of the top ministers and lieutenants and captains in the NOI, First Resurrection, stuff like that. Still have my general orders, my student, my um, English C lessons, my student enrollment, all of my lessons. I don't practice it anymore because I, I don't think the way I used to think. But a lot of these guys, like you just laptop revolutionaries. You saw Tariq Nasheed. That's where you got that FBA shit from. You saw Dr. Umar Johnson. You looked at some Armin Ra squad. I know you very well. I know you very well. Trust me, I do. And you don't know how to defend your position. You play race, you, you play racial, you play race politics, and you don't even know how to debate your racial politics. I annihilate any of these niggas who call the show on that shit. It, it, it's just too easy for me because, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is this. You know, you have good and you have good people and evil people come in all different color shapes and sizes. So if you want to push a racial agenda, fine, you can do that. But don't try to project onto me your beliefs. Those are your beliefs. That ain't that ain't your, your paradigm and worldview of the world. It, that's that's what you believe. Don't try to put that on me. We're not a monolith group of people. You get what I'm saying? And again, if you if, if anybody feels some type of way about me, why the fuck you watching me? If you feel I'm a coon, why watch the coon? If you feel I'm a sellout, why watch the sellout? You know, if you feel I'm not going to push your racial agenda, why watch the guy who's not pushing your racial agenda? But they come over here, they watch me every day. So I don't, and I really don't, I don't give a damn. I don't care about the backlash. I don't care about the blowback. I don't care about pandering to any group. My, as far as I'm concerned, fuck the groups. Fuck the whites, the blacks, the well, Asians, and, and, um, and the Hispanics who feel some type of way. I don't give a fuck. Three o'clock, they're going to be right over here watching. Right. And, you know, the interesting thing is I think that a lot of these fans or some of these fans have been pandered to for so long or we're in such an echo chamber that they can't handle the fact that not everyone is going to have their worldview. Uh, not, not only just the worldview of politics, society, or culture, but also just boxing. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, there's probably going to be people out there that say, I think anyway, is a little overrated. You know what? Here's the thing. If you say that, I'm not going to, I wouldn't, I'd have a higher intellect and more ethical and moral standing than to say, well, you hate Asians. That's Asian hate. If I did that, I would slap myself silly. I'd be ashamed of myself. And another thing, I really would be. And another thing, none of that shit ain't got nothing to do with boxing. It don't have nothing to do with a check level hook. It don't have nothing to do with a bolo punch, ring IQ. It doesn't have anything to do with um, slipping and countering, the, diff, the, the, the defensive maneuvers that you need in order to be able to win a fight. It has nothing to do with punching power, timing, you know, conditioning. It has nothing to do with none of that. And it's like, damn, you hit the nail right on the head. What I realize, and I tell my audience this time and time again, these guys that's online on social media, they're not boxing fans. They're, they, they, they are... Um, race hustlers. They are push racial narratives. They, they I, listen. They, they, they have racial insecurities. They have um, some of them probably have daddy issues. Maybe they grew up in a dysfunctional neighborhood or dysfunctional family. And what they do is, it's it's all of those issues cloaked in the name of boxing. And if you let them to talk long enough, watch what they do. You'll see. Oh, this ain't no boxing fan. This nigga, this dude, a laptop revolutionary. Oh, he, oh, he can't. Oh, he can't. He, he don't. He just, he just saw Dr. Umar Johnson video last week. That's where he got that from. Oh, he been watching Tariq Nasheed. That's where he got that from, and all that stuff there. And I don't see you doing anything. I, I see you typing, but you're not going to the White House. You're not stepping to Jim Crow Joe. You're not going to the white folks who you feel that's oppressing you. You just on the white man's platform typing. Um, um, harassing uh, people who look like you, who don't see the world the way you do. That's what I see you doing. But I don't see you physically out there in the streets doing nothing. I don't see you doing that. I don't see you banging on Whitey, homie. So don't bring that shit over here to me. Um, Steve, listen, check this out. Um, so about the boxing, though. Um, what what what's it, what what do you think the future is from a lot of these fighters? Do you think the market is going to have to reset itself? From, from you know, I've been saying that I, hmm, that's it. I think so. I, I asked someone this about five, six months ago. I said, where is, when is the market reset going to happen? And they said to me, Steve, it's happening. I said, in what way? See the guys that aren't fighting? Yeah. They're not making money. They're being told something, a message. That's the market reset. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting. I am, I am curious to see that this new form PBC that will not have Fox, that will not have Showtime, that will only be doing several shows a year, 
I'm assuming all pay per view. Mm -hmm. What will happen to a majority of those fighters who aren't going to be featured on those shows? Will they be left into the open market? Will there will they be free agents? Will they have to sign on as opponents? Um, you know, a lot of this. I, I actually think boxing needs to be a little bit more consolidated. Maybe have one less network or two. Mm -hmm. Maybe have one less promoter or two, so that the talent pool across the board isn't so thinned out, and fighters have to actually fight each other. They got to fight each other. Um, Right. And and so, look, when I see Keith Thurman, who still acts like it's 2015 or 16, it boggles the mind. It boggles. Like, he really, look, What's and that? I like Keith, but he's a legend in his own mind. He really thinks he's the modern day Ray Leonard, that he can come back at any time, every few years, and people will care. He's not that level of a fighter. And the sense of entitlement that a lot of these guys have, that they don't have to actually fight to A, improve their craft, stay sharp or keep the fans interested in them and to build a fan base is alarming to me. But I don't even think they understand the damage that they're doing because I don't want to say that they've been coddled, but they've come up in this new boxing marketplace where they don't understand that there used to be a time when an Oscar De La Hoya as the biggest fighter in boxing in 1997 yeah. fought five times and he built upon it. It actually paid off for him. That is what, continues to worry me coach is that our biggest name fighter like look i'm a big fan of Shakur stevenson i think he's an excellent boxer he might be the best boxer in the world for the next dozen years mm -hmm. but coach he only has 20 fights he's mid 20s 24 he shouldn't be just a twice a year fighter this early in his career Cotto wasn't pacquiao wasn't mayweather wasn't then la jolla wasn't and you could say, well, yeah, but Steve, it's different now. Right, but different does not mean better. Because yeah. my, my contention would be, okay, but will Shakur Stevenson at this pace ever reach the heights of the guys I just named? No, not at I don't, this pace. I'm not sure they can't. Can. Well, right, not at this exactly. Pace. Not at this pace because I'm, I'm glad, you know what, I'm glad you brought on Oscar De La Hoya. I've been talking about Oscar a lot because, you know, um, a lot of people, you know, have their issues with Oscar, his personal life, and that's well documented. But... Um, I say this, and you can say what you want to say about Oscar De La Hoya's um, personal life, and I may agree with you 1,000%. I won't, you won't, won't get an argument with me on that. But as, as it relates to Oscar De La Hoya, the fighter, that dude didn't duck anybody. He fought guys when it was in their prime. Um, even even though he might have been past it a little bit, him and Floyd fought what? Two, what that 2007? I think Oscar De La Hoya. 2007. Was, yeah, he, he, I think he'd been in he been about 15 years. He, he was about 15, his 15th year. Yeah. Anyone that has criticism of Oscar De La Hoya as a promoter or in terms of his personal life may have a point. They, 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 they're probably making some valid points. There's no argument for me. He's been far from perfect, and I like Oscar personally. Yeah. But I've been critical. You could see it. But as a fighter, keep this in mind. Uh, him and Floyd, in their first or second years of boxing, each fought like 10, 11 times. That doesn't happen today. No, it and, and we're talking about fighters who are not as talented as those two. So Oscar De La Hoya in 1996 wins that big fight against Chavez on closed circuit. Takes the rest of the year off, but in 97, mm -hmm. I still remember, I was very young on the boxing beat. He was the biggest name by far. Tyson was still kind of going through his issues. And I remember him fighting five times. And then in 98, it slowed down a little bit. But check this out. In 1999, in one year, he fought Ike Corte, Obacar, Felix, Trinidad. In one year. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Oscar, Oscar got what? Okay. He got like five or six losses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Right. Yeah. And so I, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, even a Fernando Vargas who admits to me, like, Steve, I wish I would have done my career a little bit differently. I should have been slowed up, but I had a lot of issues. But at age 21 or 22, and I'm not saying anyone else should do this, but mm. this is how different it is. In a one-year stretch, I think this guy fought Winky Wright, Ike Corte, Felix Trinidad. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, I just, it's different. And, and people say, well, Steve, um, it's changed. You have to accept it. Uh, first of all, I guess I have to accept that I have no role in the matter, but I don't have to like it because I know I, I've come to the realization of this coach. 
I've already seen the best boxing I'm ever going to see. What? It, it's not yeah. going to get better than what I've seen. Yeah, it's not. I got to see Roy Jones, <laughs> <not>. Trinidad, <laughs> Hopkins, Floyd Mayweather, yeah. De La Hoya, oh, Manny yeah. Pacquiao, yeah. Barrera. Mar yeah. Right, Marilla, think about this. Think about this. Uh, going, uh, uh, what's my, what's my name? Uh, Morales. Morales, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 Tapia. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, we, 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 saw coach, the best, we saw the best boss we're going to see. that. Them, them, them days over. <laughs> coach, think about this. I wrote about this. Right, Coach, think about this. And I wrote about this last year. How many rivalries, multi-fight rivalries, how many Daddy Ward, Barrera Morales, oh, uh, God. Marquez, we don't even get these fights once nowadays, but these guys were doing series. Yeah, yeah, they was fighting two or three times, like right? yeah, <laughs> right, like Chocolatito and Estrada, great rivalry. Uh, Golovkin and Canelo, for at least for two of those fights, was a great rivalry. Where's our next rivalry? Where's our next multi-fight series that's going to be in the record books or the history books? That's going to do documentaries over. Where? Yeah, Where no, is it? No, no, don't, 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 those days are over with. And um, you're right. We've seen the best boxing that we're going to see, Steve. Um, it's pretty much over with as it relates to that. We're not going to see those types of fights anymore. Um, you know, it is what it is. I'm like you. I've, I've, I've come to that conclusion as well, that those, the, the, uh, the best days are over with from that, from the, you know, from that era. Hold on, um, Rick Glazer just hit me, hit me up. Yeah, but um, those days are over with. I'm, I'm sure that now they want to marinate certain fights. They say certain fights that could be big fights are not big fights, you know, and stuff like that. And again, I do get it. Boxing has changed. But, you know, and, th and this is why I say you can't compare. This is why I say you can't compare yourself to uh, the old school. You can't compare yourself to the Oscar De La Hoyas, the Floyds, and stuff like that because you have to do the things that the Oscars, the Floyds, the Manny Pacquiao's, the, uh, the, the uh, Antonio Barreras, the Moraleses, you got to do the things that they did in order Coach. to get that legendary status. If you're not doing those things, you can you don't have the right to compare yourself to those guys because you're not putting in the work that it took for them to get to that status. Coach, can I tell you something? It surprises people when I say this, but I've written about it and I've mm. talked about it before. I don't think Floyd Mayweather's to blame for all this, like people say. Nah, nah. And I'll tell you he's why. A, he's a scapegoat. He's a, he's a scapegoat. For he's, he's an easy scapegoat. But I, when I hear young fighters say, well, I, before I become money, Mayweather, I got to do the pretty boy part. And I say, bullshit. You guys don't even want to do that. People have to understand about Mayweather. Before he got to De La Hoya, which really took him to another level, it took him 37 fights and four major championships in four different weight classes to get to De La Hoya. So if everyone did that, put in 35 plus fights and be a champion in four separate weight classes and become no worse than number two pound for pound before they got to the real money stage of their career, I'd say, you know what? God bless you. Do it. They're not even doing that. So I don't want to hear any more that Floyd is like the ruinization of boxing. I think it's unfair. I don't think it's true. I don't think it's accurate. The other thing that's really interesting to me is that um, the, the thing with Floyd was there was a point where he actually fought more than twice a year. I've looked at the career. What's happening now, and this is a trend I do not like, Coach, the first time a fighter wins a title, whether it's in their 15th fight or their 25th fight, they automatically, because of their escalators and their contract, become twice-a-year fighters. Like, like a, you look at a guy like Janabek who's fighting tomorrow. Janabek cannot be put on the Golovkin plan because he's already stuck it twice a year. Right. And so you can't even create a Golovkin now because Golovkin had a guy by the name of Tom Lawson who told him, Gennady, if you want the big fight, you're going to have to take less money and fight a little bit more often. Are you with me? And he was. Too many young fighters and managers, coach, they do not have that long-term vision. They don't. That's a shame. You know, you know, hey Steve, you're right about that. They don't have a long-term vision and stuff like that, and, th and that's why I say it's different. I can't, I don't like to compare the errors or even the fighters. It's just different now. I understand it. I, I see things the way you do see it as it relates to. We've seen the best boxing we're going to see. Those days are over with, and I and I and I, I have accepted that. I've accepted that. I'm not going to argue, bitch, moan about it. It is what it is. Um, Steve, uh, I, I thank you for really taking the time out, man, to really come on the show, call into the show. Oh, absolutely. Is, is, is and that, coach, can I make one more point? Go ahead. One more point before I ruin all your weekend. Um, <laughs> this Sunday, this Sunday, Coach, you know what marks the one-year anniversary since the last time we saw Deontay Wilder? 
Oh. Think about that. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. Now, he Robert Hellenius. Yeah. Yes, he did for about two minutes. Yeah. And think about this. He fought three minutes in about two years. Now, look, I know everyone's going to have differing, differing opinions of Deontay Wilder. You know, it's funny. I appreciate Deontay for what he is. Every time he fights, business is good. Everyone wants to talk about him. He's exciting. Yeah. He's not perfect, but he's fun. And I can appreciate Deontay for laying it on the line. Every time he fights, something yeah. exciting happens. For that, I appreciate him. Yeah. But why in the world has he not fought in over? I don't care what the situation is. And look, and I've written about this, and, and I've had some big issues with this management who I used to be close with. Dimitri Bebal has not fought in about in about a year also because November 4th was his fight with Gilbert. This was the fighter of the year who kept saying, well, I got to get Canelo knowing, and I kept telling them, you're not getting Canelo. They don't want you, so get something else. This is the biggest problem with boxing. With talented and popular boxers like Bebal and Wilder, simply do not fight at all. You cannot move the sport, coach. Right, you, you cannot build anything that way as an industry. You need the names. You got to have the names that's willing to fight. Fight the competitive fights. Could you imagine the NBA if uh, everyone load managed to a point of Kawhi Leonard? You, you, you couldn't. That league is already faltering because the stars don't want to play every game like they used to. Mm. But at least you get 82 Laker games or whatever your team is a year. So there's still some activity. But there's so many things in boxing that need to be changed. And I hate to be cynical about this. I'm not so sure they can be fixed, Coach. Not at least quickly. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Um, Steve, let everybody know about the Three Knockdown Room podcast for you and Mario Lopez. Yeah, well, Mario was on vacation celebrating his uh, 50th birthday, guys. Even though he still looks 35, I'm, we're all very <laughs> jealous. But we're coming back. We're coming back this week, this upcoming week. We've got a lot to talk about. Yeah. And then you can see me on Twitter at SteveKim323. And, Coach, I, I love what you do. I, I listen to at least 60 to 90 minutes every single day. And have yourself a great weekend. And to your audience, everyone have a great weekend. Enjoy your life. Appreciate you guys. All right, shout out, man. Steve Kim in the building, man. Salute. Give Steve a round of applause. Man, I'm out of here, bro. Let's go. Come on.